Hey guys, it's here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to another patch note video, and this one seems to be a big one. Like, to be honest, most of the patches are nowadays, and that's just the state of the game. Right, is having to do really big patches every two weeks to just try to get a sense of balance, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll say, excuse the wet hair, just came out of the bath, and you'll probably see it as this, like, I don't know, half an hour video unfolds. It will slowly dry and probably rise and start to get a bit floofy. Uh, but what you can do is throw a like on the video. It does help out. And obviously I do record this, edit it, upload it, make the thumbnail, get it all ready for tonight. So that's quite a lot of work to get done like in a few hours. So yeah, if you appreciate that, please throw a like on the video and then comment what you think of the patch as we go through it. So the first thing to say is the infographic. I make it bigger. So here are the changes. So having nerfs to Anivia, Chogath, Elise, Ivan, Olaf, Pantheon, Ramos, uh, who is again getting a change, I think. Uh, maybe it's not this patch, though. Uh, Seraphine, Talia, and Udir. And then buffs are Ezreal, Jinx, Karma, Mordekaiser, Riven, Singed, Shivana, Silas, and Vladimir. A buff to Vladimir is always scary to me, and Silas, to be honest. We're getting an update to Gangplank and Rel. We're having a new loot event, which I believe is Luna Beast, so do expect a Huzzy loot video in the coming days. And we're having item changes, enchanter items, mage items, marksman, fighter, sustain, and tank. So mo mo most of the items in the game, apparently, uh, are having some type of change. But there we go. There is the, in essence, most of the changes. And you, as you can see in the key, when it comes to the nerfs, predominantly it's all about skilled play that is causing the nerfs to happen. Then Ramus's average play... Talia's elite play, which again, I've said in many challenger spectates, Talia is one of the best challenger junglers, but you don't really see her in other places uh, because she's very rewarding, but also very bad at getting punished if it doesn't do very well. But there we go. Overall, pretty good. Let's go through it, though, because it again, might last a while. First champion, Anivia. I use this champion, um, you know, this season. And unfortunately, just again, with how my games have been going, just unfortunate games on the Nivea, but the champion is in a strong place. So they are doing Q, detonation damage decreased, R, cooldown increased later. So that's one of the changes that they made recently to the R, uh, unfortunately. Um, and they're kind of reverting a little bit of it already. So the detonation damage was 50% ability, a 50 ability power ratio with then base damage. It is now being nerfed base damage by 10 base damage per rank. But the bigger thing is 5% ability power. So in the mid to late game, that is definitely going to have a little bit of a hit to it. But obviously the main bulk of damage of Nivea is like the ticking of her ultimate combining with items. But also the E obviously is a lot of damage and that's not being touched. But the R cooldown, which to me felt great that you could actually reposition a Nivea ultimate without an insane unfortunate time penalty. This is being nerfed. So it's staying at four seconds at rank one. Then it goes down, it was 2.5, then 1 second. It's now 3 seconds, then 2 seconds. So it's still low, but it was really nice uh, feeling as a 1 second. But obviously, yeah, it maybe w was a bit too strong. But obviously, that's already being a little bit changed from what they did to her at the beginning of the season. Cho'Gath. So I don't really see too many Cho'Gaths. And this, again, is a nerf, technically. But uh, E base damage decrease later. So with the last round of tank item buffs, Cho has been feasting in top lane. I, I haven't really seen Cho, but fair enough. So they are just nerfing a little bit. Well, actually not a little bit. Quite a bit of the base damage of his E. That it's still at 22 in early game. But then starting at rank 2 onward, a little bit of a nerf. And then at maximum rank, it's actually 12 damage per, I guess, auto from your Vorpal Spikes at max rank. So that's actually that's a bit of a nerf. But obviously that's base damage. It will still have some type of scaling. Elise, very strong uh, jungler for solo queue, I would say. We did a commentary on her recently in Challenger, and it showed the dominant snowball nature of the champion. So they are going to be nerfing her base damage of her Q by 20 at maximum rank, and her W, which is the bigger thing, attack speed, uh, which obviously W is what you max on Elise. You get to the attack speed that helps jungle clear. And the attack speed is being heavily nerfed later into the game. So it's still 60% of rank 1. So your early clear isn't going to get changed too much. But it used to be 100%, 140% attack speed um, bonus when you had W activated in spider form in late game. It's 40% off. So because you're maxing the rank, you're going to get to the you know rank 5 of W by what, like level 8 or 9? You are going to feel that nerf, like 100%. You're still jungle clearing quite frequently at the middle, you know, by like at level 8, 9, 10. You're still fully jungle clearing, so that will be considerably slower jungle clearing for Elise. 
Ezreal. So again, worth knowing there was no nerf. I don't think there was a nerf to Jin or Kaisa still. So maybe their plan is to just, instead of nerfing those two specifically, they're trying to buff other AD carries to bring them to the same level. So all they're doing is buffing the AD ratio for Ezreal. So they used to have, his Q used to have 120% AD ratio uh, for his Q. It's now 130%. Um, not bad, because again, Ezreal, what, I think he goes like Mirror Mana. I think it's either Triforce or Divine, maybe Divine. And then he actually can build like Ravenous Hydra and stuff nowadays. A lot of AD. So that probably will see some type of nerfs. I'm uh, sorry, some type of buff uh, that people may actually take notice of. Uh, Ivan, quite again, an obnoxious champion that a lot of people aren't a massive fan of in the game. But the belt base health growth decreased and is he E shield decreased later. So I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the second or third nerf to Ivan in a row. So the health growth has gone down by 10 per level and is E. The shield has also gone down starting at rank 2 and then into late game. It's a 20 shield nerf. So not astronomical. It, what the bigger thing is, is he's squishier himself so you can more likely just one shot an ivan but uh yeah you'll probably still see a bit of ivan uh jinx base health decreased okay, well, that's interesting q bonus range increased uh fish bones bonus attack speed penalty decreased e cost increased a arm time decreased max range at cast adjusted all right so they're buffing other things but in a meta that is, I would, again, I kind of call it League of One-Shots, you're nerfing an AD carry's base health to try and bring them into meta. That seems rather counterintuitive because you're making them more likely just to get one shot. But anyway, so the bonus arranged when you've got the uh, switcheroo, the bazooka out, is actually considerable. 25 range bonus for each rank. That's actually pretty big. I like that. That does help Jinx quite a bit. And the bonus attack speed penalty used to be minus 25% attack speed when you switch. It's now minus 10. So it's even more forgiving with also giving you more range. That is quite nice. Flame chompers are now, they cost a bit more mana. The arm time, however, is quicker. So, you know, sometimes you put your chompers down and a jungler is ganking you and they just run over, run over the chompers. You're like, how didn't it root the champion? Now this will happen, it's going to help you because they arm quicker, so they can become more act. they activate quicker, therefore can help you. And also, while casting Flame Chompers farther than max range, it now casts to the max range instead of causing you to, oh, it, they're giving the Cinder effect to the Chompers. So I'm not sure I like that. I, d I don't know if I liked it on Cinder, but basically, let's say you want to cast your chompers and before you cast like you're in bot lane and you press w near the dragon pit what that would actually do is move your character the whole way to the dragon pit in range to put the chompers down now what it's going to do you're in bot lane you go you press chompers at dragon you know big distance it will just cast chompers in the direction of dragon where you're standing at its maximum range so that's what it's, it that, that's going to take jinx players probably a little while to get adjusted to and again i'm not entirely sure i like it but there's that anyway uh karma base mana regen increased q cost decrease so they are buffing karma support base mana regen is better so she's got to have a bit more mana regen and her q her main damage poking and everything tool is also cheaper so she's getting more mana regen and her main kind of ability is cheaper. So overall win-win for Karma. Mordekaiser. Uh, e cooldown decrease. So buff to Mord. Again, they are very hesitant, I think, to buff this champion. Because they know he is quite obnoxious when he's strong. Um, so I think they are scared to buff him. Um, but yeah, the, the buff is quite considerable. Two seconds off his E. That's quite good. Um, you know, a 10 second cooldown on an E that, you know, potentially can kind of e and grab like the whole enemy team if he if he aims it well for example so again a bit of a buff he again mord isn't that strong right now so he probably could do with more buffs than that but still like it's it's a buff in the right direction for mord i guess uh, olaf obviously has seen incredible a lot of play this season one of the gore drinker sterics gauge champions 
and obviously i think we are seeing changes to items soon in the, in this patch but let's see what they're doing base health has gone down so he's squishier and the bonus attack speed has gone down. It used to be up to 100%. It's now only up to 75%. But this is new. The amount of attack speed being granted is now displayed on Olaf's passive icon. So you're actually you're being told how much attack speed you're getting. Which is just nice to know. But yeah, big nerfs to Olaf. As well as the item nerf coming later. So Olaf might be bye-bye. Uh, Pantheon. So the Q... Um, oh, is that what they're doing? So... They are trying to... Obviously, Pantheon Jungle has ro risen in popularity recently um, to try and snowball early games. They are nerfing that. <laughs> so the Q Comet Spear, the reduced damage against... Um, it only used to do reduced damage. Like, it used to do full damage against champions. It used to do full damage against jungle monsters. It used to do less damage against lane minions. Now, it's doing less damage against lane minions... And jungle monsters. So that is just a direct nerf to jungle pantheon. And then also the Q cooldown. Which obviously you're in the jungle or even in lane phase. You're kind of spamming it. Huge nerf. Three second nerf at rank 1. Obviously it's the ability you're maxing for the most part. But three second rank 1. Few seconds each. And then it does eventually level out. By rank 5. It used to be 8 seconds. It's back to 8 seconds. But again. For what is supposed to be an early game power champion. Yes he has better scaling than he used to. But still predominantly early game. Nerfing his early game that heavily. Is pretty bad for him. So. <laughs> I All I would say is I feel sorry for Pantheon players in that. Uh, Ramus. So I don't know if he's getting his change by the way this patch. They have announced that obviously his bounce. That he jumps when he ults. That is coming to League of Legends. But I guess it's not now. But the E. The Taunt. Used to have a cooldown, 12 seconds down to 10. They are nerfing Ramus Taunt that is now a 12 second cooldown across the ranks. Again, I don't really see a lot of Ramus, to be honest, so okay, but that's a bit of a weird nerf, but sure. Uh, next up is Rel, arguably one of the most forgotten champions in League of Legends, and I imagine a couple people right now go, oh yeah, that's a champion. Um, so they are buffing the damage ratios. And that's one thing I'll say when I've tested this champion and I've even played it in this season in ranked, she literally does sod all damage. And I know some people are like, she's a tank. She's not supposed to. Sure, she's not supposed to. But in League of Legends, tanks do damage. Like any tank, Alistair, Nautilus, even the support tanks do decent amount of damage. Rel doesn't. She does really bad damage. So ideally, every tank support would be like Rel, that they're not supposed to do damage. But every other one of them does, so they're probably having to give Rel more damage to be relevant. Even Leona does pretty good damage. So the AP ratio of W uh, is going up in both of them. Uh, both mount up and the crash down. And the also the E, the unbind cooldown was 3 seconds, it's now 1. They're fixing a cooldown bug. They're fixing uh, other things as well, um, which is good. And then the R, the AP ratio has been massively buffed. 40% AP ratio of Magnet Storm as well. But the thing is, I don't even know if this champion builds any AP. And obviously she'll have default AP, um, that every champion just gets default AD and AP. So she's going to have a small damage buff from just being her default and the AP ratio is being better. But actual items, I don't think this champion buys AP. So... Yes, it's a buff, but I don't think it's going to help that much. But the champion, I will say, is underrated. There are some pros out there that actually think she's pretty good already. So potentially look out for Rel if these buffs do make any difference at all. Riven. They're buffing Riven, by the way. And I know this is the funny thing. Americans right now are probably like massive eyes going, they're buffing Riven? Again, server differences. Riven apparently is one of the best picks in NA. Has been for years. Really popular NA champion. And it's the only server that she seems to be like really like and obviously you have special riven one tricks in every server server but like america really rates riven highly the rest of like europe asia riven isn't i'm not scared of a riven like it's riven like eh. but she's getting um a buff her e which is going to be shielding two second buff so it used to be a 12 second um rank 12 second cooldown sorry at rank one eight second at rank five it's now 10 seconds down to 6. That, that The only thing I'll say about that is I'm not a massive fan of like all the shielding and healing and everything in League of Legends. Riven's nearly going to have permanent shields. So that's not going to be the most fun thing to deal with. Um, Seraphim, again, one of the League's most controversial champs. Uh, but passive base note damage decreased and W shield decreased. So just overall nerfs for that champion. Shivana, 
Q, empowered basic attack damage and second strike bonus attack damage increased and W, w bonus movement speed increased as well. So I actually heard they were buffing... Oh, they are. Yes. Whoa, what? They're buffing AP Shivana and like her E, fire breath or whatever the hell in dragon form, it still does a billion damage. But that's all it does. You know, it's the ultimate that does AP and then you're just throwing fireballs. They're giving the Q AP ratio. That's strong. So look out for AP. I might even play AP. I like playing AP Shivana. It's cheesy and stupid as hell. It shouldn't be a thing, but Riot won't it be a thing, apparently. Uh, especially if they're giving her more AP ratios. So the Q used to do 100% attack damage with the auto. Still doing that, but now he's also doing a bonus 25% AP, AP on that as well, which is pretty good. And then the, bon the second strike bonus damage... Um, again, used to be a percentage of AD, and it's still doing that. Same percentages, by the way, with AD, so you're still doing that, but also a bonus 15% ability power. I have no idea why they're doing this, by the way. And then the W, bonus movement speed, is being buffed. Oh my god, what? So they're giving it the same flat AP, uh, flat percentages movement speed, but now you're getting bonus 8% movement speed per 100 AP you have. So in late game, Shivana, AP Shivana could easily, let's say, have 300 ability power. So you're getting on top of that an extra 24% movement speed. God, she's going to be so speedy, like initially pressing W. Wow, that seems really strong, but okay. Uh, singed. Haven't seen a Singed, I don't think, this whole season. But the Q damage ratio is being increased. So they're buffing Singed. 10% more ability power. Again, it, it some champions, again, it doesn't matter how many buffs they really do. He's a very niche champion. Very unique playstyle that some people love. And a very small amount of people do. And that's amazing. All, all people should have a thing that they like. But the vast majority of League players are going to be like, what's the point in Singe? So this buff is the... It, this is for Singed players. So if you're a Singed player, I imagine you're happy because you're getting a flat 10% ability power uh, buff, ability power ratio on your Q. So there's that. Silas. Q cost flattened and the W damage increased. Oh, God. <sighs> One of the healing champions of League is getting buffed. Uh, the Q used to cost 50 up to 70. It's now costing 55 at all ranks. So small level one nerf to it. But then it's actually a buff from rank three onwards. And then the W, the damage used to do flat damage and then 85% ability power. It's doing more flat damage than it used to do and a 5% ability power buff. <laughs> again, that champion scares me when it's getting buffs. Uh, Talia. So again, one of the challenger uh, junglers that you see nearly in every game in challenger is having a nerf. So the bonus and movement speed from her passive where she hugs walls and gets around the map really fast is being nerfed. 8% uh, in early game, 5% in late game with scaling. So a bit of a nerf. And then the Q... Ah, oh, so there it is. So her jungle clear time is going to go down because the subsequent stone damages against monsters used to be 100%. They used to do all the, you know, fine damage. It's being now going down to 80%. So that is overall a nerf to her jungle clear time. So that will impact her, her a little bit. Oh dear. So <laughs> it's insanely funny. Like it's happened now a few times when a champion has like has been announced. We're doing a rework. Um... And then it becomes meta or kind of meta. It happened with Aatrox just before the champion got his full rework. He's meta. He's in pro play. It's now happening to Udyr. Again, worth knowing, they've already said we're not having the Udyr rework until 2022. They said early 2022 is when the rework will come out. For some reason, I think Riot is only doing one rework per year now. We're getting Mundo probably in the next couple months. And then the next one after that apparently is Udyr in 2022. I really think Riot should be doing more than one rework a, a year, but, you know, uh, reworks don't make them more money. Uh, new champions do. But they are nerfing the Phoenix damage. With the Phoenix max, it seems to be strong. So they are just nerfing the uh, ac base active aura damage by a little bit. You know, it, not much in early game, but by late game, it's a 25 damage nerf for the aura each tick, I guess. I don't even know if people are playing Udyr because of his damage. They seem to be picking him because he synergizes well with the items more than anything. But anyway. Uh, Vladimir. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Damn. That's pretty good. Our cooldown is now flat. 
It used to be 150 seconds at rank 1, 120 seconds, so 2 minutes at rank 3. It's 120 seconds at all ranks now. Wow. Depending what Vladimir ult actually gives per rank, you might even see some people not maxing that. Like whenever, like some, like getting maximum Q and maximum E actually might do more than going rank two, rank three of your ult until you have to get it. Maybe it'll be interesting to see. And there you go. There's all the champions again. Still some champions that I think are missing. Echo, Cough, uh, Kaiser, Cough. But there, yeah, at least we're getting changes. Uh, now we're getting item changes. So mages ability power for Lichbane is going down to seventy, which again will impact, I guess, Echo. Uh, Horizon focus is getting buffed. I like the item too. Uh, 15 more ability power and it gets extra it get the proc of the horizon focus is now being activated at 700 range not 750 so that's overall a pretty damn good buff for the item uh the the verdant barrier is also now being changed so the it grants 0 0.5 magic resist per each unit killed maximum of 15 oh cool that is uh um seeker's arm guard so obviously seeker's arm guard grants 15 i think armor per minion kill up to 30 so you know 0 0.5 armor per kill up to 30 gives you 15 bonus armor this is now becoming the equivalent this is becoming the ability power uh, the magic resist equivalent of seeker's arm guard that's cool uh banshee's veil is going up with ability power and it, it is more expensive because of that but i think that's good it's a good item and it the ability power on it is a bit weak. Seeker's Arm Guard, again, is being nerfed because it is just so cost-effective and it is becoming more expensive. But I am completely okay with that because it just seems to be the staple thing to do in mid lane in a lot of matchups, especially, obviously, if you go into an AD champion. Buy the Seekers, leave it there until later. You'll get Zonyas later into the game. It's just Seekers was so good. I think people will still do that, by the way, but, you know, uh, it's also being more expensive for Zonyas. Enchanter items, so obviously the big popular thing at the moment is the moon something or other with that staff. Um, so zooming in on enchanter items, it's clear that flowing water is largely overperforming compared to other second choice items. On the other hand, Chemtech Pure... Per Pure, uh, pure Petrifier? Putrefier? There we go. Is fulfilling its niche role well, healing reduction. Um, which, by the way, I never see people buy that item. But it's not purchased as often or as powerful as the other Grievous Wound items. So again, nerfing the ability power for the staff. And then also, they're buffing an item that I didn't even know was in the game. Ability haste is being buffed by it. And then the updated passive is healing or shielding an allied champion now empowers the ally's next, attack, next damage to an enemy with 60% Grievous Wounds. Oh my god. Oh, that's so good. Whoa. Okay, supports, please buy this item. So again, inflicts the it used to be inflicts immobilized enemies with the 60%. So you as a support had to CC an enemy to um put them on grievous wounds, 60% healing reduction. Now, if you just heal or shield your AD carry and they attack stuff. It's applying Grievous Wounds. Your AD carry is applying it without your AD carry having to buy Grievous Wounds. That's so much better. Or your mage. You can heal your or shield your mage. They no longer have to buy a Morella Nomicon. Again, the, the, the Grievous Wounds items for mages and AD carries are pretty bad. They're not very good uh, compared to the actual core items they want. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Okay, I might see supports building that. That would be good. So, fighter items, uh, Silver Med Dawn is being buffed, 5 uh, AD and also more health. Iron Spike Wick, Iron, Sp uh, Iron Spike Whip, uh, no longer deals damage to low health minions and monsters. So, they're just getting rid of that. Marksman items, are they going to nerf Gale Force? Let's see. Uh, Phantom Dancer is being, I think, kind of changed a little bit, but it's being given attack damage, less attack speed... Uh, stacks of bonus attack speed is going down to 4 and bonus attack speed per stack is going down to 30% so a bit of a change to the item again it's weird not many AD carries are buying it but maybe that will make it immortal shield bow is being buffed to uh, 5 more attack damage and 5% more attack speed oh my god they're not nerfing gale force lord dominic's regards also is being uh, buffed by 10% more armor pen which is good but yeah they're leaving gale force okay Fair. Okay, so sustain items. So one of the controversial, biggest controversial things in the game right now is obviously self-healing. 
Um, it, there's so much self-healing in the game, so let's see what they're doing. So, Gore Drinker, um, and obviously Olaf we saw earlier was one of those champions that's being nerfed, but also a Gore Drinker champion. So, it's still giving 25% of the actual use of Gore Drinker was press the ability. It did damage, but also heal you 12% uh, missing health. And I think it's 12% missing health per enemy you hit, right? So if you went into three people, press Gore Drinker, it was actually giving you a lot more health. So it's now doing 8% missing health instead of 12. So it's a 4% missing health buff, which obviously is a, well, sorry, nerf. So it is being nerfed, but I still think it's probably going to do okay. Like, I, I don't think this is going to ruin Gore Drinker champion items, if I'm completely honest. Uh, Leeching Seer, Omni Vamp used to be 10%, now it's 5. Health used to be 150, it's now 250. So it's making you healthy, tanky, less sustain. I will say, as just a personal opinion, I think Omni Vamp was a mistake. Um, again, do spell vamp if you want. Do lifesteal if you want. I, I just think having champions having omni vamp are now healing through their auto attacks and their spells. I just think it's, again, too much healing. Uh, I think, you know, if you're an AD carry, build lifesteal. Your, your spells shouldn't lifesteal you. If you're a spell champion, your spells can lifesteal you with spell vamp. I think it's a bit silly that the, every, everything, omni vamp is everything heals you. It's just a bit silly. Um, Rift Maker, Omni Vamp used to be 15%. It's now 8%. Health, although, is going up, so make you a bit tankier with health, but obviously less sustain. And the Mythic Passive used to give 5% Magic Pen. It's now... Oh, God, really? It's now giving 8... Um, again, Mythic Passive, remember, is per legendary item, it's giving 5% Magic Pen. It's now giving 8 ability power per legendary item, but 2% Omni Vamp. So if you get four other legendary items, you're getting 8% Omni Vamp. So then you'll be up to 16% Omni Vamp and you're getting more ability power. Yes, you're not getting magic pen, but overall you're still heat. That's technically, weirdly as it sounds, potentially a buff to Rift Maker in late game because you're going to be healing more. And again, Riot still hasn't really fixed healing. Uh, Eclipse, uh, the shield to the item is going up, but the Omni Vamp is going down by 2%. Whoa. Ravenous Hydra, 15% Omni Vamp, now going down to 10. Sterix Gauge, the shield is going down, and the shield duration is going down as well. Again, I still think, if, again, just gut reaction, healing is still going to be a problem. I, I, I think it's more Omni Vamp, because like Olaf, you know, Olaf, Aatrox, the champions that people are like, oh my god, it's because when they have Omni Vamp, they're auto attacking quite a lot, that's life stealing them, but then they also cast spells. Olaf's Q. Aatrox's Q, that's also then healing them, you know? I think they eventually might need to get rid of Omnivamp, personally, but that's just me. Uh, tank items, Force of Nature, Absorb Bonus Movement Speed, used to be 6, maximum of 30, it's now 8, maximum 40, so tanks can be faster with Force of Nature, not bad. Uh, Dead Man's Plate, used to give 475 health, it's now only giving 400 health, so it's a bit of a nerf, and Frozen Heart is becoming cheaper, the combined cost is cheaper, and it's it's actually given a little bit less armor, so they're just kind of nerfing the item a little bit, but also making it cheaper. So there's that, uh, Clash Mode is coming, so there's all the items, a all random is coming, bug fixes again, uh, do remember, um, if you see your champion here, then make sure you read it or an item that you build for example upcoming skins so it's the luna beast so we have luna beast fiora viego annie darius alistair java de uh, and then prestige edition is the fiora we're also randomly getting crystal rose zyra and swain and withered rose cinder and talon so a lot of skins coming um which will be in the next where what does it say it should actually tell us when they're coming uh maybe if i scroll up i think it's usually here so here we go um the new skins the lunar beast event will be a february 4th so expect my video of the loot to happen on february the 4th but then the the uh rose and flower themed is february the 11th i'm guessing those are the um valentine skins i guess technically because i guess flowers valentine's day i'm guessing yeah that would i guess the rose ones and yeah the rose ones are the valentine skins this year i would guess but just less obvious to be Valentine's Day. But there we go. Patch notes. Quite a lot in here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. We're literally nearly on half an hour of the dot. So what a good prediction by me. Um, so what do I think? Well, again, 
Riot's having to make these big changes every patch now because the game, you know, again, I like League. I, I do want to make it clear. I do like League. Yes, I'm having a rough time with the game right now, but, you know, speaking, not even my own experience, like, of how my games have been going, just speaking of balance, the game isn't balanced. Like, it, it truly isn't. There's too much damage in the game. There's too much healing in the game. There are a lot of champions that are really strong. There are a lot of champions that are really weak. Um they have a lot of work to do and this this isn't the end this is not the fix again in riot's recently dev update they said by the end of spring is when they hope that they have the get the, the game state in basically a kind of balanced ish state so at the end of spring what we're coming into spring now i guess what mid may is when summer or mid, late may is spring i guess june is the beginning of summer i don't even know so they, they they're saying they've still got like another two to three months of basically fixing the game that shows how bad the game is in terms of balance right now if it takes that long which is a bit crazy but anyway that's gonna be it hopefully you guys enjoyed so yes i will make this video get it uploaded to you guys again my hair's drying but going a bit weird at the same time uh, but I will get this video up to you guys literally tonight. If you appreciate that, do throw a like on the video, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.